Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Preston Moore. And before I get started, I want everybody to close your eyes and think of yourself as a grain farmer here on the fabulous Great Plains. But your combine's old, it's worn out, and you need a new machine to harvest your crops. Okay, you can open your eyes now. I'm here today to tell you about the advantages of a gleaner combine and why you need one for your farm. Some of you may say, a gleaner, why do I need a gleaner? Why silver instead of something like green or red? Well, I'm going to uh, tell you today that there are numerous advantages on the gleaner that you cannot find on any of the competition. The first and biggest being the transverse rotor. And then the gleaner is the only combine with a class A transverse rotor. And the rotary combine, the transverse rotary combine, has smoother crop transitions throughout the combine that require less power to operate. The gleaner transverse rotor has the most separating and cleaning room out of any combine on the market, and they have gravity independent cleaning, which makes them ideal on hillsides. But there's more. <laughs> they are the only combine to enable smart cooling on their combine, which reduces the time that you have to spend cleaning the engine compartment and radiators of your combine. The combine does it itself. They are easier to service than any other combine in their field, and they are the lightest combine on the market today. But first, let's talk about what makes the Gleaner rotor unique. As you can see, we have three different colors of combines here. We have silver, green, and red. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to compare Gleaner to John Deere today because the John Deere and the Case and New Holland and Massey Ferguson, they all use a variant of the same style axial rotor, whereas the Gleaner is the only one with a transverse rotor. And as you can see, the transverse rotor mounts crosswise in the combine, whereas the axial mounts inline. The transverse rotor has numerous advantages, the first one being the feeding method. The feeding is accomplished by feeding the crop mat in a smooth, even stream, 39 inches wide, from the header to the rotor. Now some people say, well, 39 inches, that's not very big. A John Deere's is 55 inches wide. That's wider, you should have more capacity. Well, that's true to an extent, but what they don't tell you is that the 55 inch wide feeder house is bottlenecked down to 30 inches, which is narrower than the 39 in the gleaner. And since the crop mat has to be compacted down and bottlenecked into the end of the rotor, they have to have an accelerator beater in the front to cram all that material into this narrower rotor. And that accelerator beater is a tremendous horsepower sink. And then once the material gets past the beater, it has to be sheared and crammed in around the sides of the rotor by a screw on the front of the rotor. All this adds to the amount of power that is required to operate your combine. A gleaner rotor is also surrounded by a cage that is perforated 360 degrees all the way around. That's their big selling point, it's 360 degrees separation. John Deere rotor is a lot bigger than a gleaner rotor. It's 10 feet long. A gleaner rotor is only 7 feet long. But how does a gleaner have more separation, you may ask? John Deere rotor has a cage around it just like a gleaner, but the difference is the John Deere rotor cage is covered on top. There is no separation on the top half. They can only separate on the bottom meaning the grain that is separated in the top half of the rotor is trapped inside, continues to impact the threshing element, and can damage grain quality, especially in crops like corn. And so the grain that is separated in the top has no choice but to remain in the rotor until it gets to the side where there is an opening, whereas it is expelled violently down onto the cleaning shoe and can cause significant overloading, whereas the gleaner doesn't have that problem. And I'll explain why in a minute. As you can see here, this is a picture of a John Deere rotor provided by John Deere. As you can see, there's the cover on the top and the perforations on the bottom where the grain is free to exit. And here's another couple pictures of the John Deere and Gleaner rotors. You can see clearly the cover and then the perforations. Also, your screw at the front that is what grabs and mangles and shears and forces the crop mat in and around the rotor. The Gleaner rotor is fed evenly through that opening. And you can see it's perforated all the way around. Like I said earlier, in the John Deere, once the grain is deposited out of the rotor, it is deposited on one side due to their closed cover system, the glean, and that overloads the cleaning shoe. On a gleaner, it exits all the way around, it falls down in, a, in an uneven curtain, no combine has perfectly even separation. But to compensate for that, gleaner has two distribution augers underneath the rotor that take the grain curtain, these augers spin quite fast, and they spread this curtain out evenly over the width of the combine. And then from there it falls into these accelerator rolls which are made of rubber so they do not damage the seeds. And they spin very fast and they propel the grain downward through a blast of air at four times the speed of gravity. And because of that they are able to clean grain on hillsides up to 23% slope. Now 
If I was betting on a 23% slope, I'd be more concerned about the combine staying on the hill than I would be having a <laughs> grain. But because the grain is expelled downward through the air blast, they are able to clean most of the grain before it even hits the shoe. The shoe is smaller than that on a John Deere, but just because they don't need a big shoe, they clean most of their grain from that air blast before the grain even hits the shoe. And this is just a picture of a John Deere Dynaflow Plus cleaning shoe showing you kind of what it looks like. They've had trouble in the past since their rotor is so long, separation occurs at the back of the rotor as well, and grain can fall down on the back of the shoe where it's easily bounced out the back, and that gives additional loss. And speaking of loss, <laughs> This is one of my uncle's fields. I was helping them out back in 2015. They had some custom cutters come in that had John Deere combines, and I was doing some plowing for them after the harvest, and I got to the first field, and I thought, wait a minute, so there's stripes everywhere. I said, fields aren't supposed to have stripes. <laughs> well, as you can see, in every set of tracks, there's a thick carpet of green coming up, and this was taken about a week after a rain. And this is just the design of the John Deere. It's the way it works. When you push your combine to its full capacity, which all farmers are going to do, you're going to lose grain because of that bunching up on one side of the shoe because of their enclosed rotor design. Our next feature we'll talk about is called smart cooling. Now, how many of you think it would be fun to start up your day every morning by going with an air hose and cleaning dirt out of the back of your combine? Nobody. Oh, you think it would be fun? <laughs> Okay, well, Gleaner saw this was an issue, and in 2011, they developed this system called Smart Cooling. And what it is, is there's your radiator fan, and it is hydraulically driven, and the fan blades are variable pitch, meaning they change their angle based on your engine temperature. So if your engine's running hot, the fan blade angle will increase and cool your engine off, and then they will level back out, and when they level out, they require less horsepower to operate. So it saves you power and fuel. And another feature of the smart cooling is every 15 minutes, the blades will reverse their pitch and blow out the radiator for five seconds. Then they will rotate back to a full degree, and then they will blow out the engine compartment. They do this every 15 minutes to prevent chaff buildup. It's one thing you do not want in your combine engine compartment is chaff buildup, because then you lead to fires. And Gleaner is the only combine to employ a feature of this magnitude. No other combine has anything similar. Some have wipers over their radiators, but that just kind of, it kind of wipes it off, but it also helps push smaller particles through the radiator, and it's not as efficient. And here in this graph, you can see the horsepower savings as the ambient temperature increases, your fan power is used more, so if it's 100 degrees, you're going to use more fan power, but if it's 80 degrees, you're only using half as much fan power as you would if you had a conventional cooling system. Serviceability. Okay, let's face it, no matter what color combine you own, if it's mechanical, it's going to break down or you're going to have to do maintenance, and everybody wants maintenance to be easy. Cleaner combines, like I stated earlier, use only perpendicular shafts. The axial rotor mounts inline, the John Deere's have augers that mount inline with the combine, changing bearings, greasing those things, or working on them is just hard. The Gleaner does not have that problem since every shaft runs straight through sideways. They have Every grease point is easily reachable from the ground. Nothing's really mounted up high, and nobody wants to have to climb on a ladder to try to get to something to grease it. One, it's not safe, and it's not convenient. Nobody wants to do that. And the biggest point is the rotor is easily removed by one person in about 30 minutes. If you have an idea of what you're doing, you just open your side panels, unhook your drives, and as long as you have something like a forklift or a tractor with a front end loader or a skid steer, anything to just lift up on it, you can move it, you can take it out by yourself, and then make any necessary maintenance or repairs, and then sit you back in, you're ready to go back in the field in less than a couple hours. On a John Deere rotor, it takes about two days to pull a rotor out of a John Deere. I was actually talking with my local John Deere dealer, the technician in the shop that was in charge of doing all the work on combines, and, you know, he loves John Deere with all his heart, and he says, I hate to tell you, he says, pulling the rotor out of a John Deere is something none of us look forward to. He says, even in a fully functional shop with all kinds of equipment and manpower, because it takes us about two days, he said, instead of being able to easily pull it out the side without dismantling anything, he says, we have to pull the feeder house off the front of the combine, we have to pull the accelerator beater, we have to take off all kinds of shields. He said, it's just a very strenuous, long process. And he said, if they work two full days, he said, that's how long it takes to pull the rotor out. They have to pull the concaves out from around the rotor. They have to pull the separation times off the rotor. It's just, it's a big mess. 
And then lastly, we'll talk about weight. Why is weight an issue? Just like in people and pets, you know, it's not good to be overweight. And Gleaner has realized that. And as you can see here, we're talking about class 8 combines. A class 8 Gleaner weighs 32,220 pounds, and a comparable class 8 John Deere weighs 17,443 pounds more than a Gleaner. And some of you may say, why is that? Are Gleaners made of aluminum and tin foil or what? But the answer is no, they're made of the same high strength steel. And in fact, Gleaner side panels on the sides of the combine are actually made of steel. On any other combine, John Deere, Case, New Holland, Massey, they're all made of plastic. And Gleaner is the only one in the industry that still uses metal side shields while remaining lighter than the competition. And some of you may say, well, why is weight really that important? Well, here in the dry land region of America, here on the plains, there's a lot of farmers that do no-till. And any of you guys that do no-till know that one thing you do not want is compaction and tracks left in your field. It's not only rough on your equipment when you're spraying or planting, it's also rough on you. <laughs> and so, and an interesting fact is that Gleaner Combine with single wheels exerts less pressure on the ground than a John Deere with duals. So you not only save weight, power, and fuel, you save money on tires. And the, and the reduced weight of the Gleaner and the 17,443 pounds extra of the John Deere is the equivalent of pulling a dead John Deere 6210R four-wheel drive tractor behind your Gleaner Combine through every field, across every mud hole, and down every road. And in fact, it takes 32 extra horsepower just to move the John Deere combine that does not include the power needed to operate it in the field. And the Gleaner also has a lower center of gravity due to its transverse rotor design. They are able to wrap their grain bin around the front of the rotor, whereas since the John Deere rotor mounts in line with the combine, they are forced to move their grain bin higher up, which gives it a higher center of gravity, which is not ideal on hillsides, truly making Gleaners combined with their gravity-independent threshing, true hill climbers. So in conclusion, I hope you guys learned a lot today, and you now feel like you're informed about which combine you should buy for your operation. As you can see, these are just some of the many advantages there are on a Gleaner combine, including the transverse rotor, gravity-independent cleaning, smart cooling, ease of serviceability, and the fact they're the lightest combine on the market today. And as I'm sure you can tell, all of these features make for an ideal combine. Here's just some references. And thanks again for being here. I hope you guys learned something and now feel like you can go out confidently and make a purchase of a new leader combine today. Thank you.